What do you get when you combine two great things like Disney and Indiana Jones? You get an Indiana Jones theme park ride and Quackshot, an action platformer for the Sega Genesis. Quackshot was released in 1991 by Sega as part of a series of games based off of Walt Disney cartoon characters. Other games that were part of the series were Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and World of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Quackshot was later converted for the Sega Saturn with Castle of Illusion, only for Japan as part of the Sega Ages series in 1998. One day while looking through Uncle Scrooge's old books, Donald finds one on an ancient treasure, along with a map that has clues to find it. After finding the map, Donald exclaims joyously that he would be richer than Uncle Scrooge if he found this treasure. Because of this outburst, Pete's gang, who is spying on Scrooge, overhears the news, and now is set on course to get the treasure as well. Donald takes off in a plane, taking Huey, Dewey, and Louie along for the adventure. All the while, Daisy yells at Donald for not coming to dinner and leaving. The adventure is on, and it is fantastic. After the introduction, the first thing you see is an Indiana Jones-style map with three locations. These are the first of nine locations, most of which you can choose between in what order you want to play. But due to requirements set for each level, some will have to be visited multiple times to get past roadblocks. That I shall discuss later on. Now because this is an action platformer, we know there is jumping and attacking, and Donald has a gun. Not just any gun, mind you, but a gun that can shoot plungers, among other things. When a plunger hits an enemy, it will stun them for a limited time. The plunger can be upgraded from yellow to red to be longer lasting and used as platforms. Then it can be later upgraded to green, which adds the ability to hang off of birds. When you get the green plungers, the implementation of hanging on birds only is used on two levels, minutes away from each other. You must control the altitude of the bird while avoiding other birds and the objects that they drop until you get to the end and the plunger drops you off. The gun can also shoot popcorn, which is a spread shot that uses 5 units per shot with 95 units of ammo at max capacity and has the ability to get rid of enemies. And the final ammo is Bubblegum, which floats slowly forward, taking out certain walls, objects, and enemies, only allowing one shot on screen at a time, and has 50 units of ammo as its max capacity. Every shot you take can hit what's on the screen and a little more, meaning if an enemy is ahead of the screen and you know it is there, you can hit them before they have a chance to hit you. This also helps for platforming with your plungers at certain parts of the game. If you need to choose a weapon, item, or call the plane, you press the start button. Within this inventory screen, you can use items and look at them to get clues. Another type of attack that is only used in three levels is the quack attack. In these three levels, Donald must collect five chili peppers to go into the quack attack, which will make Donald invincible for a short period of time, rampaging across the level, killing enemies as he touches them. When it comes to enemies, most can be handled with a plunger shot, but others might be able to block, take several hits, or require different weapons. Each enemy hit will give you points that count toward getting a 1-up, but in order to be fair, you can only get points from an enemy once, making it so that if you want a lot of extra lives, you must hit most enemies. Besides shooting and jumping, Donald can also slide and dash, but the thing to remember is, because Donald has a weapon, touching enemies who aren't stunned will hurt you. There are two minecart sections, as is standard of these types of games, and each are quite short. The main thing to remember here is that Donald does not have any momentum in his platform. The speed of the cart might confuse you as to how Donald will react if you jump. The main suggestion is that when you need to jump to another cart, move in the direction as you jump. There are five bosses in the game, each with their own strategy to beat them. Most of the boss fights have semi-safe locations to be, and once you have the strategy, it makes most of the fights easier. It just comes down to figuring out how many hits each boss will take. This is a game built around platforming and shooting, meaning it might be hard at first to get used to the physics and the environments, but once you have it down, it's almost a cakewalk. Sure, there are some cheap moments and some stupid ones, but this is one of the easiest platformers on the Sega Genesis. Partly because even if you lose all your lives, you get infinite continues, meaning you can start again with three lives on the main map and choose where you last left off. Whenever you visit a new location, there is usually a point where Donald places down a flag, this flag is an area where you can be picked up by the plane, and if you return to this level, this is where you'll be dropped off. The main thing to remember when looking to take off is to look if there is a flashing flag at the bottom of the screen. If not, you can't use the plane. The takeoff is super smooth, because when you press the start button, the call plane option is already selected, and ready for one more button press to lift off. 
Having the flag as a checkpoint is useful, because there will be points in the game where you will get to the end of a level and not have the item required to continue. By placing the flag down, you can go to a different country and find the required item to go further in that level. For example, to get into a temple you need a key. To get further in Duckbird, you will need to upgrade your plunger. Learning what you need and in what order can make repeat playthroughs much quicker if wanted. Donald has 8 orbs of health. When losing all your health, assuming you have extra lives, it will start you off on the screen you were last on. In order to help you survive or continue on, there are several types of pickups throughout the game. Ammo, money, chili peppers, food, one-ups, and some key items. The ammo looks like corn and bubbles and will fill some of your ammo. The money gives you points, points which start to total up and when they hit a certain threshold you are given an extra life. The food comes in two varieties, ice cream and cooked chicken. The ice cream heals one point of health and the chicken heals you fully. The extra life is a cowboy hat with one up spelled out on it. And the key items as mentioned will help you progress within the game either by being used or looked at. What is cool about this game is that it connects its world to the Disney one by having several characters from the cartoons. Goofy, Pete, Scrooge, Shere Khan, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and a few others can be found. Even Mickey has a slight appearance, if only on a blimp. The graphics for this game are great, with plenty of animations and detail. The water running down the rocks in Transylvania, the small bits of detail on everything, the way Donald starts to tap his foot while waiting for you, and plenty more. The effort put into it really shows, especially on the levels with several instances of parallax scrolling. The music in the game fits the locations they are used in. They are short and repeat, but only if you get old after listening to them for a while. Also, a few music tracks will be played in different sections. There are 11 tracks that can be heard in the sound test and the options of the starting menu, with a few omitted. The sound effects are cartoony and fit the game wonderfully. Each weapon shot, jump, item pickup, and so on have been picked to make it all work in this cartoon video game world. With the only slight issue being that only one sound effect can be dominating at one time. Quackshot is one of my favorite Genesis games. I remember constantly borrowing it from my neighbor or asking to see him play. And when I first got it last year, I was rusty. But because it is short, about one hour, and fun, I've begun to get better each time I play. It is easy to pick up, and if you learn from it, it is easy to master. Quackshot can be found online for around $10 or less, depending on where you look. If you like what you see, I highly suggest you play this title. Thanks for watching. Any feedback on this video or any of my other videos would be appreciated. If you want to get in contact with me, message me on YouTube or Twitter. And if you want to see any of my other work, click the links provided.